Meanders, powered by Google Translate and created by Jim Brand and Chenille Chotkin. The course of a river consists of three parts, the upper, middle, and lower course. First is the upper, or the mountain course, where the river originates. Here the velocity of the river is faster due to the steep gradient. The floor of the valley is narrow and the valley is V-shaped. Second is the middle or the valley course, where flows are wider and the sides of the valley are more gently sloping. Here the velocity of the river is slower than the upper stage. Meanders are typical landforms found in this stage of the river. The third part of the river is the lower course, which has a gentle slope and is almost flat. The river channel is usually at its widest and deepest here, because the amount of water flowing in the river is at its greatest. Now let's talk about how meanders are formed. When a river has a slight bend, centripetal forces cause the water at the outer bank to flow relatively fast in comparison to the water at the inner bank. Water with a high velocity has the energy to take sediment along with it. At the outer bank of the bend, water hits the land with a high velocity, such that it takes sediment along with it. This makes the bend get rounder and rounder. At the other side, the velocity of the water is not high enough to keep taking sediment along with it. The sediment then drops at the inner bank making new land. When a river is really wide, high-velocity water from the outer bank needs to make a long distance. This means the new meander is formed far from the first one. When the river is small in width, the water has to make a small distance, such that the new meander is formed relatively close. After doing some research, measurements from all over the world reveal a strikingly pattern between all the meanders. The length of an S-shaped meander tends to be six times the width of the channel, as long that nothing gets in the way of a meandering river. The curves will get curvier and curvier until they bump into each other. When that happens the river follows the straighter path downhill, leaving behind a crescent-formed lake which is called an oxbow lake. After a while, this lake dries out. This is the end, thank you for watching.